today, which is from 1 Samuel chapter 2. My heart exults in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. There is no holy God like the Lord, there is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly, let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and actions are weighed by God. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. God brings low and also exalts. God raises up the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. God will guard the feet of the faithful, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. Let us worship God with our opening hymn, number 352 in your hymn book, My Lord, What a Morning. Television shows, social media, 
media and other distractions. We forget the hope of your promise to be with us in every moment, through every situation. O oh God of mercy, love us still and forgive us. Touch our hearts and minds so we may rediscover our hope in you and no other. Teach us to encourage one another with caring and good deeds. Amen. We've made the confession of the church. Let us make the confessions of our own hearts in a time of silence. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we are all held firmly in the hands of God's love. Whether we think we deserve it or not, God's mercy reaches out toward us to offer us a fresh start. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued to pray before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sitting no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ram. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel. Samuel, for she said, I asked him of the Lord. Hear and so read him.
single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since then, has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also added, I will remember their sins, and their lawless deeds no more. When there is forgiveness for these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach him with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglect, neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. Your hands are reading. So it looks like a lot of our kids are otherwise engaged, but I see um, at least one, and do oh, you want to come up too? Dear God, thank you for listening to all our stories 
You listen to our good news and to our bad news. You hear our happy songs and our sad songs. Help us to remember that no matter what is happening in our lives, we can tell everything to you and trust that you are always with us and will always help us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we don't have Sunday school this morning, but you're welcome to sit with your family for the rest of the service. And we'll stand and sing our praise for hearing God's word. Jesus recognizes that the world as it is, is full of violence, brokenness, and evil. When he says there will be wars and upheaval, he's not just talking about something that's going to happen in the future. It is something that has been happening for as long as the world has been spinning. There were wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines in Jesus' time and before. And we as humans are always looking for ways to protect ourselves from that kind of upheaval. Now the temple was the center of national life in ancient Israel. 
The Jewish people had lost much when the Roman Empire took over their land, but they still had the temple. And by building this grand and glorious complex, the Romans thought they might pacify the people of Judea and keep them happy. The Temple Mount was considered to be the center of the world. The temple was built to be substantial and eternal. And the disciples comment on how large the stones are. Just the walls of the temple were made up of blocks of stones that could be up to 40 feet long, 20 feet high, 15 feet deep. In other words, two of them would fit in this entire sanctuary. That's how big they are. And if you can imagine those stones piled on top of one another to build walls that were 100 feet high and 500 feet long, you start to see why the disciples were so impressed. When I was in Jerusalem about 20 years ago, there was excavation at the southwest corner of the temple that was going on. And they had built a set of stairs going down to a road that had recently been unearthed. And the road dated back to the time of Jesus. So we all got to go down and stand on that road where Jesus had certainly walked during his lifetime. And to stand on that road and look up at the walls of the temple was overwhelming. And to imagine how that entire structure got built with no cranes and no hydraulic lifts was mind-boggling. So it's no wonder that anyone traveling to the temple in those days would have been completely dazzled and completely sure that it would be standing for all time for what in the world could knock those stones off of one another. In reflecting on this passage, Pastor Nadia Boltweber asks, what are the large stones that we rely upon? What are the things that we treat as eternal that are not eternal? What are the things that need to stand in place for us to continue to place our hope in God? Maybe it's the health and safety of our families, the certainty of our career, the stability of the economy, the confidence that we can walk down the street without missiles dropping on us. As the disciples gazed on the temple in which they were placing their hope, Jesus does not say the temple is bad. He just said that the temple standing for all time is not the ultimate sign that God is faithful. There is nothing wrong with us wanting our families to be healthy, for our work to thrive, for us to feel financially secure or safe on our streets. But none of these things is eternal. These things cannot love us the way God loves us. Jesus was right, of course. The temple that the disciples found so impressive, impressive was destroyed in the year 70, but it was not God who destroyed it. It was the Roman Empire in a war. And Jesus was right in saying that there will always be destruction and false prophets and famine and upheaval in the world. All these things happen, have happened, continue to happen. And says so Pastor Nadia, God does not cause any of it, but God does bear all of it. God bears all of our sin and all of our suffering. This is what the cross is all about. A God who became flesh and took all of our violence and our hatred and our wall-building sins into his very own body. The flesh 
of God made flesh, bore all of it on the cross, so that our violence and our hatred and our sins are finished. There is nothing to be gained by the walls and violence we humans love and are addicted to, because God upended our systems of violence and power over others by taking it all as a blameless victim into God's crucified body. That means that God no longer meets us in the big shiny temple of ruling political or religious power. Rather, God meets us in the very body of Christ with all of the definitions. God meets us in Jesus' own flesh. God meets us in the sacrament of communion. God meets us in the church itself. God meets us in the body of Christ. We have a servant God who disarms the violence of humanity and offers us God's own blessing and grace in exchange. It was a blessed exchange of these things that has never made any sense, but has always made all the difference. The death and resurrection of Jesus is nothing less than the everlasting and irrevocable yes of God. Jesus, in today's gospel story, is saying to his disciples that the temple in which they place their hope will one day be torn down. But that does not mean that our hope is torn down. Because Jesus is the new temple. We tried to tear him down too, but he rose again. And with him rises our hope. It is God, and not symbols of God, that live eternally. So as we heard from the writer of Hebrews, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And he who has promised is faithful in a way that walls and empires and efforts to domesticate God and placing our trust in ourselves and our own systems can never be. So that finally there is only one thing worthy of our trust that will never be torn down. It is not a wall or an empire to protect us. It is not a tradition or a place where people have worshipped. But it is and always will be the God of our faith. The God of Genesis, creating the universe. The God of the covenants. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. The God of the prophets. The God of Mary and Joseph. The God who raised Jesus from the tomb. This is where our ultimate hope lies. When Jesus talks about the destruction of the temple, we might hear the message of God behind that saying, this world is not as I intended. This world is not your ultimate home. I am still working to make this world my world in all of its goodness, and all of its fullness. It may be the end of the world as we know it, and that is where our true hope lies. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is number 357 in your hymn book. The days are surely coming. <laughs>
prayer. We want to uh, begin our prayers by mentioning the mission. The November mission is the emergency overflow shelter operated in Albany on code blue nights. So those who um, are unhoused will be safe from uh, below freezing weather. So if this is a mission that touches your heart, these envelopes are out through the month of November. Also, uh, next week is the fourth Sunday of the month, so our monthly collection for the new Scotland, Scotland Community Food Pantry. Um, and there is a list in your bulletin of items they particularly need among those of um, personal care products, paper products, and uh, shelf-stable food items. So let's gather all of our prayers together. We have named some folks um, earlier of those who were on our hearts, and let's call them to mind as we um, come into an attitude of prayer. Good and gracious God, we lift up our prayers of gratitude. We give thanks for our blessings, for the beautiful autumn foliage, for the love of family and friends, for the laughter of children, for the joy of our pets, for food to eat, for a warm place to sleep, for people and situations that make us feel valued and safe, for the promises of your word. We thank you for the life of Jesus Christ who showed us the heights and depths of your power in this world. We thank you for this day when we can gather and meet together, for this place where our faith and our hope continue to be built up by your word to us. We pray for our church leaders and church family that we may all grow deeper and stronger in our faith, always seeking your guidance. We pray for our Guatemalan church partner, Monte de los Olivos, that you will bless their ministry. We pray for the leaders and economies of our nation that all may have access to the basic necessities of life and people may live in peace. We pray for those who live under the threat and violence of war, for the people of Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Gaza, the Middle East, and Haiti. We pray for all those suffering with illness of body, mind, or spirit, and for healthcare workers who strive to bring your health and wholeness to those in need. We pray for resources for all who are poor, companionship for those who are lonely, comfort for those who are mourning. We pray for those who work to serve others and care for the earth. We pray, O oh God, for the transformation of our human ways. We hear your call to keep our hope grounded in you and nothing else. We hear your word that this world is not what you mean for it to be, that you are continuing to do your work among us. Inspire us, O oh God, so that we do not sit back and think we can just wait for you to do all the work. Inspire us to become your partners so that we do not walk away from the world, but we walk away from the evil in the world. And we seek to bring your love, your peace, your joy, your compassion into the world. Help us, O oh God, to find the ability to let go of the things whose time has passed and the courage to take on the things whose time has come. Guide our steps always to follow more and more in the way of Jesus Christ and hear us as we join our voices to say the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us use the words of Scripture to be called to our time of giving. From the prophet Nehemiah, 
The people of Israel are to bring their contributions of grain, new wine, and oil to the storerooms, where the articles for the sanctuary are kept. We will not accept the house of our God. Giving is an act of faith. Friends, we have been focused on the um, topic of generosity through this year, and so we have been sharing stories of what our church means to us and how we see our church having an impact on people who are near and far away. And so I've invited David Morse to um, share a little bit of what this church has meant to their family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So first I have to say you have a rocking choir. <laughs> I can tell you the joy of the Lord is our strength and my heart was strengthened with your joy uh, that was amazing bless so I just want to share a couple things before I share my my happy moments of this building and memories here um, I think you know this but you are well served Pastor Holly and your financial team and the building and grounds committee and whatever, you are well served. Um, meeting with them, she is a phenomenal communicator. And the people that I met with that are on that committee in back in that room asked questions, were fully engaged, were all in, and you could just tell they were very good stewards. And that is not always the case. And I share that because I came from a very similar meeting last week for the same purposes. And I can tell you that there was more strife and division in that room than there was in the world. So I just want to encourage you is that you are well served in this house. Um, when you have grants, I, this is how I choose to look at it, is grants are equivalent to favor. <laughs> I believe God's favor is on this house, or you wouldn't receive grants. I believe that God takes care of this place. I believe that this building is a place where heaven touches earth. And it's been that way ever since I've been in this area. So let me just share some of my memories. As I received my marital counseling back in that room with Pastor Greg, I walked out, I actually shook is I was married in this church. Um, both of my daughters were married in this church. But my memory and my most fond memory, well, I've had a couple, was just watching my father-in-law, who was a Beatle. And I never knew what a Beatle was until I was educated with Joe Gage being with the Beatle, carrying the, the Bible up and, and all of that. And that's a fond memory. Um, but this is my greatest memory of this building is when we were married, Pastor Greg and my wedding party, the men, were in this back room. And my brother Link, and we're pretty similar, got Pastor Greg laughing so hard. It literally took him 20 minutes to get himself back together. So it's normally the bride and waiting on the bride. <laughs> We were back in this room, right, Jay? Because I think you were in there for about 15 minutes for Pastor Greg to try to get himself together to come out and, and lead the ceremony. And every time he went to that door, he'd start laughing again. And it was just riots. So I just want to say that this house is filled with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. This is a place, truly, that I know has a servant's heart. You know, with the many dinners that we came to here and and just all of the things, the outreaches of this place. You know, a church isn't this building. A church is you. It's the people. But I just want to tell you on behalf of my family and on behalf of Pinnacle Roofing, what an honor it was to serve you because we have been so well served by you and by this church. So I just want to thank you and thank Pastor Holly. Thank you, David. Sisters and brothers in Christ, 
we have hope because God is still at work in the world. So let us act on our hope and make our offerings to God so that we may join in doing God's work in the world. The offering plates are at the back of the aisles. You can use the QR code in your bulletin. You can go to our website, newscotlandpc.org, anytime to give to support the ministry of God's joy and God's love in this place. God blesses us in more ways than we can count. So we give to God not out of compunction, but out of gratitude for everything that we have already been given. So let's stand and sing our praise to God using the words of the doxology. So let's sing our closing hymn number 39 in your hymn book, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
beauty of the new roof, a different color, I hope you notice. The uh, the dragon seat at the top of the sea ball, built to last for many, many decades. You can't quite see from here the chimneys on the corner back there and the top that got um, repointed. And then also our beautiful new gutters. So friends, this house has been built for the glory of God and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We gather this day to dedicate our new roofs, gutters, steeple work, and chimney work to the glory of God. Let us read responsibly from Psalm 84, which is printed there on your insert. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My, my heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Blessed are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. The Lord of hosts, blessed is everyone who trusts in you. Let us pray. God of the universe, that have not contain your glory, yet you have come to be with us in the person of Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are present with us now. We dedicate the work done on this church building to your honor and glory. We thank you for the gifts that have come together in these projects, the craft and skill of many hands, the contributions of money and material and prayers, the labor of love and commitment. Bless the work of our hands, O God, that this place may offer your welcome to many and diverse people, that all who seek you here may know your presence in their lives. By your grace and according to your will, may this church be an invitation so that all who enter will be nurtured, and may this building stand as a sign of your spirit at work in the world and as a witness to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, as we stand here this morning and see the beauty of the changes that have been made to our building, we recognize it took the efforts of many people over the last two years to bring this dream of keeping our building safe and sound and beautiful to reality. So on the back of your insert, you see listed the names of many folks who worked to improve our church building. Some were not able to be with us this morning, but I know they're with us in spirit. So I'd just like to read these names of those that we work most closely with. Our steeple architect, Bill Brando from John D. Wade Associates. Our steeple contractor, Mike Allman from Mathco Enterprises. Our mason, Nate Coxity from All Face Masonry and Chimney. Our roofer, David Morse from Pinnacle Roofing. Our gutters, um, Lit J. and Laura Fletcher from St. Bay Fashion Soft and Gutter. Our buildings and grounds and finance committees, John Griffin, Kevin Dwyer, Bob Hulon, Homer Warner, Dan Coombs, Maria Winchell, Lisa Allendorf, Diane Bodie, and David Hulon. And our financial grantors from the New York Landmarks Conservancy, Ann Isabel Friedman, the director of the Sacred Sites Program. And from the Presbytery of Albany, our general presbyter, Rob Traywick, who I think is out of the country today, who couldn't be with us. Uh, Ruth Pierpont and Kate Capilla, who are our co-chairs of the trustees. And finally, our chaplain, Laura Mitchell, who we introduced, and I invite Laura to come for the prayer of dedication. Let us offer our prayer of dedication for all the work that has been made in this church building, secure and lovely, for years to come. Let us pray. Almighty God, we dedicate these new parts of this church building that allow us to welcome all your people into this house of worship. May these improvements stand as a witness to the passing world that we are made alive through the power of God. May they be a delight to the eye, offering pleasure and inspiration to all who gaze upon them. Keep watch over those who will enter here that in their going out and in their coming in, they may know your peace and find your hospitality as a welcome to all. May we enter your gates of thanksgiving 
and come into your courts of praise. Trusting in Jesus Christ, we dedicate the roof we see, the tower roof, the shed roof, gutters, chimney, and crenellated parapet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us say together the affirmation that's in your program. As we dedicate this place, O oh God, we ready to dedicate our lives to the service of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. Go with you. 